Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'll be looking at this, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, which is an incremental upgrade to the previous Raspberry Pi 3. And specifically in this video I'll be looking at the board specifications and comparing them to the previous Raspberry Pi 3, I'll be running some comparative speed tests, and I'll also be testing out the board's thermal performance. So, here we have the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus in its bright red but apparently non-resealable carton. It doesn't open at the top here as I suspected it would. No, it opens, uh, so it says, it says open here in a, in a one-time way. So we'll get in a stand in a knife and hopefully get in down there. There we are. Hopefully it'll open up and uh, there it is, look. And, uh, oh, oh, it opens that way. Excitement. Here is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. It's not in an anti-static bag, that's a bit of a shock, isn't it? But, uh, here's the board, and I think the first thing we should do is to put it down next to the previous Raspberry Pi 3. And uh, here it is, and uh, as we would expect, the boards look very similar. The Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus is, after all, an incremental upgrade of the previous Raspberry Pi 3. Looks uh, slightly less busy on the top. But the main thing you probably notice straight away is that the system on the chip on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus has got a metal heat spreader on the top. And this is for better thermal performance. And indeed, the whole board is designed for better thermal performance than the previous Raspberry Pi 3. So the idea is the heat doesn't focus in the system on the chip as it does on the previous model. The heat is dissipated across the whole board for this better thermal performance. One thing to note, though, is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus does use, according to the Raspberry Pi Foundation, substantially more power than the previous Raspberry Pi 3. And because of that, I've got myself one of these. This is the uh, latest version of the official Raspberry Pi power supply. The first ever Raspberry Pi power supply I got was one amp. The one I've currently got is two amps. This is two and a half amps. Let's just get inside this. Lots of exciting things today. This opens in a more conventional fashion. What a, oh, it's got things. Um, and hopefully a power supply as well. Oh, I see, these are all the, the uh, international things. Isn't that a shame these will all end up in the bin because all of us will end up with things we don't need unless we travel with our Raspberry Pis, which we probably don't. Anyway, there's the official Raspberry Pi power supply uh, for a two and a half amps. I'll be using that to power the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. Now, here we have the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus in all of its shiny new glory. I haven't got it all covered in finger marks and dust yet. And I should say lots of things here are the same as the previous Raspberry Pi 3, not least the recommended retail price is still $35. I paid £32 for this in the UK. And we've still got a lot of the things we, we recognise in a Raspberry Pi. We've still got a display connector, we've still got a camera connector, we've still got one gigabyte of DDR2 memory. And the system on the chip is also effectively the same. It's an updated version. It's a BCM2837B0. And this still contains, as on the previous Raspberry Pi 3, a 64-bit quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 CPU. But the change here is it is now clocked at up to 1.4 GHz, up from 1.2 GHz maximum clock on the previous Raspberry Pi 3. Although, to be technically correct, I should say this is clocked at up to 1.4 GHz below 70 degrees C. And then above 70 degrees C, it drops back to 1.2 gigahertz, and then it throttles at 80 as a Pi always has. And I'd also note that sharing the system on the chip, we still have a 400 megahertz video core 4 GPU. We've also got the same HDMI connector on one side of the board with 1080p video, the same audio and composite jack, and the same 5 volt micro USB power connector. And on the other side of the board, we've still got the 40-pin GPIO connector we all know and love. But next to it, there's now also a 4-pin power over Ethernet or PoE connector, to which in the future you'll be able to connect a new PoE hat. And in this context, it's good to report that the Pi 3 Model B Plus has better support for PXE Ethernet booting. Now, as you may have noticed, next to the system on the chip, there's a little metal box with an embossed Pi logo. And this is not a magic button for gaining entry to Narnia. Sorry about that, but it's not. No, this is a shield for covering the onboard wireless networking components. And specifically here on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, we've got dual band 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. 
Talking of connectivity, on the end of the board we still have four USB 2 ports and an Ethernet socket. But the good news is the last has been upgraded to Gigabit Ethernet, although the bad news is it's still connected internally over USB 2. So in practice we get about a three times speed improvement in wired networking, up from about 100 megabits a second to 300 megabits a second. But we still don't have true Gigabit Ethernet on a Raspberry Pi. Returning just a look at the board from the top, it's exciting to have a new Pi, isn't it? If we flick it over, there's not a lot here to, to really note. We have, of course, got our, still our micro SD card slot, and the micro SD card slot is just begging to be fed with an operating system, isn't it, on a, on a micro SD card. So we'll go and find it an operating system and bring to life our Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. Plus. Right. I've now got the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus all connected up and running, and here we are on the, uh, the Raspbian desktop. And one of the first things to note, there is a new version of Raspbian which was launched alongside the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. And indeed, if we go to the raspberrypi.org website, you'll see here for Raspbian, there is a version here which is a March 2018. And of course, you can get this regardless of whether or not you're using the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. But uh, let's just get rid of that for a second, because one thing I want to point out is I've got my desktop here scaled quite nicely to work in the 1080p and, and to show you on video. When I first set the uh, machine up, it looked like this, at least it did when I changed the desktop image to the one I've got here. But now, as you can see, it looks like this. And this is because I can go into the uh, menu, go to preferences and appearance settings, and these are more extensive than they were previously. If we look back to the previous version of Raspberry, you can see you've got far less extensive settings in, in appearance settings. For example, we've only got three types of taskbar size, whereas here on the new desktop settings, you've got uh, four uh, sizes you can have for the taskbar. And you can also, as previously, scale the font in the system. Here I've scaled reasonably large, both for my eyes, so you can see it on a 1080p screen. And you'll note that here, with that font size selected, things work pretty well, the menu is fine, there's, there's no problem using that font size. Whereas if we look back to the previous version of Raspbian, it didn't scale things, particularly for icons, very well with that. So there's much better support for a wider resolution of screens. You'll also see here I've got a large mouse cursor. You can now change the size of your mouse cursor. This mouse cursor is much bigger than it would be if I haven't scaled it up. And also, we've got the ability to set defaults for different screen sizes. So I can click that there, and that is um, their large screen default, their medium screen default, and their small screen default. I don't particularly like any of those, so I'll just click on the cancel and go back to uh, where we were, and, um, uh, and we are where we were. So that I think is worth pointing out, regardless of whether or not you're using a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+, Plus, we've now got much better support for a range of screen resolutions and screen sizes in Raspbian. Right, it's now time for some comparative tests, and I thought I'd start out using a test I've done many times before, which is going into GIMP and applying a filter to a 3000 by 2000 pixel image. So I've got this loaded in on both of the Raspberry Pis, the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus here, and uh, we'll go to our Edge Detect and uh, Neon, and we'll press OK at exactly the same moment on each machine, but we'll actually scale things down first, you can see them both together, and I'll press OK, and we'll see which one is going to win. I strongly suspect it is going to be, yes, it's going to be the Raspberry 3 Model B Plus. And there we are. The Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus really is faster than the previous Raspberry Pi 3. Right, I'm now going to run a comparative test of both processor power and thermal performance. And to do this, I'm going to run this bash script on both versions of the Raspberry Pi 3. And this is a script you may remember I've used previously when I've been looking at thermal performance on a Raspberry Pi 3 and looking at various cooling solutions. And what this basically does, it has a nice little loop which is set up, and inside the loop it takes a measurement of the temperature of the Raspberry Pi 3's system on a chip, and it then executes this six bench command to stress out the processor. This basically factors prime numbers up to a value of 20,000, and then it continues through that and takes a final temperature measurement. So this will give us six temperature measurements, and the pile will be stressed out during this test and we should expect the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus to do it quicker, uh, but the main thing here is not seeing that difference in speed, it's seeing how the, the performance of the Pi changes in terms of, of temperature. I would point out both of the Pis here are running uncased with nothing on, on their processors, no heat sinks or anything like that. 
So let's go over to the desktop of the uh, Raspberry Pi 3, the original Pi 3, and let's run the script there. And uh, there it goes. We can see it's starting with a temperature of 41.9 degrees. I would note the ambient temperature is about 22.3 degrees in, in this room. And uh, so we'll now, we'll now speed through that, let it finish off that test. And uh, as you can see, the uh, Raspberry Pi 3, the original Pi 3, got very warm very quickly, up to what, 77.9 and went over 80 by the end of the second iteration. And that must have got to a point where it was throttling, which would be slowing it down. So it took, what, 11 minutes, 12 seconds, uh, 672 seconds to complete the test. And uh, I'm not very happy how warm it got. That's why I ended up in the past putting various heat sinks on the original Raspberry Pi 3. Anyway, let's now come back to the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus as we've got here. We can get rid of the, uh, the script there. Let's run the test on this machine. And uh, here it's starting on, what, 45.1, starting a bit warmer, maybe because I've been talking as I've been going through the start of it. It's very difficult to get absolutely fair ambient starts. The most interesting thing here with what happens with the second number. But anyway, let's let the thing run through and we'll compare the results. And there we are, it's finished. And to sum things up in a word, wow. Those are really very impressive results for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. Now clearly it got pretty warm, it got up to 70, just over. I don't like a computer getting that hot doing anything, but uh, clearly it never throttled. It never got to the 80s. We don't know whether it'll be running at 1.4 gigahertz or 1.2 gigahertz when it got to that, that 70 mark, but either way, clearly, it was not throttling, whereas the previous Raspberry Pi 3, the original Raspberry Pi 3, clearly has to have been throttling. And that will explain the dramatic difference there in the time taken to complete the test. 436 seconds for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus compared to about 672 for the original Raspberry Pi. So if you're going to give your Raspberry Pi 3 something to do which is very processor intensive, which will cause it to get warm, you're going to get significant performance improvement, at least without cooling applied, for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus compared to the original Raspberry Pi 3. You know, running in, in this comparative test a good 10 degrees cooler. I'm really very impressed with that. I'll probably still experiment with cooling on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. I'll go back to some of my cooling experiments, but I'm very impressed with what the Raspberry Pi Foundation have achieved with the improved thermal performance on this new Pi. The Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus is a very solid, if incremental, upgrade to the previous Raspberry Pi 3. Certainly, it's great to have a little bit of extra processing power, a little bit of extra wired internet speed, but to be honest, I think the most important thing they've done is to add the heat spreader on top of a system on a chip and to improve thermal performance. I also think the new version of Raspbian that's been launched with the board is significant because it has got that better support for a wider range of screen resolutions. Having said all this, I am slightly disappointed that in 2018 we haven't got a Raspberry Pi 4 because I do worry that although the Raspberry Pi is still the world's favourite single board computer, they've sold over 9 million Raspberry Pi 3s, over 90 million Raspberry Pis overall, the Raspberry Pi still hasn't got those two killer features many of its competitors have got. In other words, as we all know, the Raspberry Pi has yet to get USB 3 connectivity, has yet to get true gigabit Ethernet. Yes, they've given us a gigabit Ethernet socket on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+, Plus, but it's internally connected by USB 2, so it isn't in any meaningful sense gigabit Ethernet. That's, that's rather a shame. So I do hope that by 2019 we'll be having a Raspberry Pi 4 launch. I'll be doing a video saying, yes, we've got a Raspberry Pi 4 with USB 3 and a gigabit Ethernet. Let's, let's cross our fingers that will happen in 2019. Anyway, that's now it for this video. You let us all know what you think of the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus down in the comments section. If you've liked what you've seen there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.